So it's been said that a video game is a series of interesting decisions, um, which is good and a useful lens to look at games through. Um, obviously not the only one, but it's also quite vague, right? <laughs> it's quite, you know, it's like saying a platform is a series of fun levels. Cool, but then how do you make a fun level? Um, and so what is in, how do you make an interesting decision? And I haven't been sort of like consciously addressing that topic lately, but I sort of figured out a term for a thing I've been interested in kind of chasing and, and kind of wanting from games. Um, and I'm calling them gut calls. So these are decisions that you make with your gut, like with intuition. Can't call them intuitive decisions because that gets really confusing because we use the word intuitive in game design a lot to talk about things that the player readily understands and readily accepts and, and uh, finds they work as they expect to do, which is totally not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is games where you've got to make a decision and you have information to go on, um, you probably don't have perfect information, and you certainly don't have enough kind of time and resources to fully calculate out the possible consequences of that decision. Um, and so you have to make it on your gut. And so the opposite of this, or, or sort of a, a useful boundary, is like um, in Slay the Spire, you're told how much damage an enemy is going to do to you, and you have each of your cards says how much block it will give you. And the decision of like, should I play block cards uh, to block all of the damage, or should I play block cards to block most of the damage and then attack them, um, is, or rather, sorry, the decision of like, can I block that damage is not a gut call. You can just find out. It, it says two times six, that's 12. I have three block cards that all do five each, that's 15. I can block all of it. I just have to sit there and, and uh, do that calculation. Now you could make that decision on gut. You could say, I think that, that number looks like not too scary. I've got some block cards. I think they all do an average amount of block. I think I could probably save this. Therefore I'll play them. Um, but you never make that call on gut because you just have the information and it's an easy amount of information to process. And so the time when your gut gets engaged is when um, either there's information you can't know, like uh, in Slayer's Fire still, uh, you can have a card that it's gonna hit Three, different, three random enemies for five damage each, and there's like an enemy with 10 health, and there's some enemies that are too tough to kill this turn. Will it kill that one enemy? Um, you are gonna have to, you can calculate all the probabilities, but you don't do that, you do it by gut, right? You just think, well, there's three of them, the chances of two of these things hitting the same enemy, I don't know what the probability is. I, I know enough maths to like, I could calculate it if I sat down and, and uh, tried to figure out what the actual um, uh, logic is there. But I wouldn't calculate it. I would just think eh, it doesn't feel like that's going to happen. It doesn't feel that certainly not. Doesn't feel like a good bet. It feels like that it's a bit of a long shot to, to think that's, that's going to kill that enemy. So if that enemy is attacking, I probably do want to play the block cards and try and block it. Um, and a line I want to draw is between gut decisions that um, where the reason you have to make it by gut is because you can't be bothered to calculate it, <laughs> like you, or you don't have time to calculate it, versus gut decisions where no matter how long you sat there and thought about it, you'd never be able to really say for sure what's optimal, or at least not in any practical way. So um, that that call about, you know, uh, will this random attack do enough damage to a single enemy to, to kill it? Uh, you could just work out the probabilities, and then I guess if you could also quantify all the other factors in it, like how much health am I going to lose if I do take the damage, and how much um, how long was the fight going to go on if I, if I just block? Um, you could probably arrive at a correct answer. Um, and so that's a less interesting kind of gut call. It's still a gut call, but it's not really what you're shooting for. There's kinds of games that I'm really drawn to and really enjoying um, lately are ones where you have a lot of information and there's things you could calculate, but it's just too complicated and there's too much of it. And really the, the way you learn the game, the way you get better at the game is just play it a lot and you just develop a kind of gut feeling for like, ah, I don't think this is worth it. And just play this by again, why not stick to the same game? Um, has that very much in the deck building uh, side of things. When you're asked to choose a, choose a card, you have to make a gut check on, on, you know, is this, this one's gonna pay off if I get these other cards later on, what are my chances of that? You're never gonna sit there and calculate it, even if you knew the, the behind the scenes stats. Uh, you just make it on gut at a certain point. Um, and I've been playing a lot of uh, board games lately, uh, including Wingspan, um, which is an engine builder where you collect birds. And I'm playing it in real life with people and also on against the AI on, on iPad. And 
Uh, it's a lot like Race for the Galaxy, which is a game I played a ton of on iPad, um, and I like them both for the same reasons. Um, but I think Wingspan is even more of a gut call game, where it's a very many faceted equation for like what you're trying to do. So in an engine building game, um, you are you can choose to spend your actions or your resources or whatever on build on playing cards that are going to from then on give you a new ability or a new bonus or something every turn, something every time they're activated, uh, which makes your engine better. Um, they may not give you any points directly, and uh, then you can also play something that just gets you points. Um, and often the cards run a spectrum of like this thing has a okay ability and it's worth a decent number of points. This one has a really good ability, it's worth zero points. This one has, uh, it's worth a ton of points and it has a rubbish ability. Some of them are worth a ton of points and have no ability. Um, and so early on, you kind of want to build your engine. You don't really need to go for points yet. Um, and you're going to want to play stuff that just sets up this good, like, okay, this thing triggers and it also this thing can benefit from it and then that thing triggers um, and I've got a nice little engine going. Um, but at some point, you want to stop building your engine. And at that point, you want to just play expensive cards, just stuff that, like, this is just worth nine points and it does nothing, but I, I can afford it because I've got these resources that my engine generated. Um, in some cases, the, uh, uh, I think, I think this isn't the case in Wingspan, but in Race of the Galaxy, your engine could generate points, could just generate points for you, or it could generate resources that you can use to build more stuff. In, in Race of the Galaxy, the only resource is cards, which I love. Um, the way you play cards is you've got to spend other cards to play them. Um, and so anything that gains you cards every time a certain turn happens, uh, that's gaining economy. Cards are just the economy. Uh, and they also give you more options. In Wingspan, it has a ton of resources, <laughs> um, and uh, you can't ever just generate a point. You can't ever just reap points. You, uh, the points are all in the value of your birds, and then in various other kind of like bonuses and rewards for, for meeting certain criteria and stuff like that. Um, all of which makes it quite a delicate balance of, of just figuring out what do I need to do and when. And one of the things that really makes it very gut call heavy is that um, every round, there's four rounds, I think, um, there's a goal that every player is trying to meet. And it might be like, get as many birds as possible in the wetlands. Um, or it could be lay as many eggs um, on birds that have this kind of nest. Um, and at the end of each round, whoever, whichever player has done that best gets a ton of points and the next the person who's done it second best gets some points and so on. Um, and so that becomes a very gut cally thing because you know how you're doing on that. And you can even look at the other players and see how they're doing on that if you take the time to, to count up what they've got and, and what they're doing. Um, but you don't know what they're going to do on their turn. So you're often in a situation where like, right now I'm in the lead by one on this. Like it's, it's about the number of eggs and I've got you know, seven eggs and they've got six eggs. So I'm going to win if nothing else changes. So I could spend my last action of this round uh, doing something else. I could gather food, I could you know, draw more cards, I could do something that's useful long term. Um, or but maybe I should lay some more eggs just, so, just to secure that win because then even if they lay eggs, I still come first. Um, but then those round, and round, round goals aren't worth that much. Um, they get more valuable as, as the rounds go on, the later ones are worth more. Um, and the difference between coming first in one and getting nothing is very big, but that's rarely a decision you're actually making, because it's like, do I come first or do I come second? That's, that's unlikely I'm going to come uh, bottom in, in this if I'm currently first. And so it's always just this like, it's only really worth three points to come first instead of second. And if you tie, then you split the, the, the points in such a way that, again, it's not a big loss. Um, but at the same time, uh, you coming first and them coming second, uh, it might be a difference of only three points, but it's three points you got instead of them getting three points, which is kind of a difference of six points, really, if that's the person you have to worry about in terms of points. But then is that the person you have to worry about? Maybe they're the, your biggest rival for end of round bonus goals, but actually the third player has a ton of really valuable birds down and they're actually going to be your closest competitor for winning. So there's just all these little factors that you just, you can't really sit and calculate them out. You, got, you, could, you could do some maths that would inform that decision, that would calculate some probabilities um, and get you closer to, to being able to make it on numbers alone. But you're pretty much going to just make it by gut because that's too much work and it still wouldn't get you to perfect information. Um, and I think those are the best kinds of gut decisions where there's 
not just a lot of factors, but a lot of types of factors. There is the probability thing. There's, there's you don't truly know um, all of the numbers involved in this. Uh, even the game actually tries to help you. And like, if you're looking out for birds that have a certain kind of nest, it'll tell you on the card. Thirty-eight percent of birds have this kind of nest. Um, but you never actually do any maths with that, right? You're not going to plug that into any equation. You just kind of you just have a gut feeling like, okay, thirty-eight percent. It's like less than half. It's not nothing. Um, and you make these kind of like judgment calls. And if you're also trying to factor in, you know, other player psychology, like, because they're thinking about this too, they're thinking, well, uh, I'm going to come second right now. Um, if if the player who's first is going to invest in this, I can't beat them and it'd be a waste of time for me to invest in it because I'll still become second anyway. Um, but uh, if I do invest it and they don't, then I get the points. So are they going to invest in it? And it's a kind of, like, they think I will, they won't, and they can I. Um, yeah, those, all those factors kind of just come together to just make it a, a... I think that is an interesting decision. Like, when you have some information and you don't have some information and you're riding that line between, you know, you, you have something to go on, you know, you have nothing to go on. There's a, there's a feeling about the probability, there's a sort of sense of it, and that feeling will change as you learn the game. That's the fun thing, is, is early on you have a, a certain feeling about um, the value of certain abilities and how good it is to get this thing down early, and then that just changes without you having to do any conscious learning. I think it's, it's kind of interesting because that, that's with Slay the Spire, that's you know, the game I've done the most learning on, the, the most kind of, have the most experience with. And I know that to get better at that, I would need to consciously learn some stuff. <laughs> I would need to sit down and really think like, okay, how much of the time that I take this card, am I actually winning? And I keep rejecting this card because I don't think it, it doesn't sound very good, but I've never tried it um, or, you know, I've tried it, but I've never tried building a deck around it or uh, all of this stuff. And, you know, I know that this is good in this scenario. How often does that scenario come up? I have my gut feeling about that. I could go look it up. There is maths, you know, uh, it's all been reverse engineered or, or, or what's the word, code mind, data mind, um, to find out what the true figures are. And I could go and find that information out, but I'm never going to because that's a boring kind of learning. <laughs> that's studying. Whereas playing over and over again, developing intuition is a fun kind of learning. And it's not as good as studying. <laughs> it doesn't, I will never be as good as the slowest five players who actually look up the stats and, and find that stuff out. Um, because some of these things are wrong, and uh, most games are not going to disabuse you of wrong instincts. You don't know when your instincts steered you wrong necessarily, like not all the time anyway. Um, and so you learn what you can, and you kind of and other instincts kind of get ingrained. Um, but that's always just fun, and the other way is basically not. 